First of all, I want you to go to our GitHub page and we have a repository for JSON examples in a couple of different languages. I'm going to go ahead and click on the link, navigate to Java, and also into the folder Jackson. The combination of using JSON Gen and Jackson is what I found to be the easiest, most intuitive way to use JSON and Java. Uh, so first of all, why JSON? Um, JSON is a schemaless uh, value object struct type uh, object notation. So very simplistic, very easy to use. Um, this is what JSON looks like. So here I have an object describing a person. Object literal is done with bracket notation. Um, arrays are done with square brackets. We don't see that here. And then the types are very simple. There's just text, boolean, number, object, and array, and null. Uh, so you can see some of those types are here. And the library that I'm talking about, Jackson, uh, it converts, well, between JSON, Gen, and Jackson together, you get a clean conversion between object notation types and value objects. So this is equivalent to what you might be familiar with in Java as a Java bean, or like I was saying before, in other languages they call it value objects or structs, um, or just object notation or object literals. Uh, so to get started, um, I will go ahead and copy this example of JSON um, and create a gist for it on GitHub. So I just click that link there, gist.github.com. I'm going to paste this in. I'll call this uh, Java JSON example, and the name of this file will be user.json. That's going to be what the class name becomes. So this generator that I'm about to show you will infer from this object notation what the class should be and what the type should be. Um, so you want to pick an example of JSON data that that uh, would be something that's complete, not something that has nulls in it or, or um, undefines, meaning that the object isn't there. You want uh, an example that, that has, you know, if, if it's optional for your object to have an, a gender and it, it may be null or it may be something, um, the JSON that you want to use to infer that class should have something, otherwise you have to manually add it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and create a private gist because uh, for whatever reason I don't want this to be Googleable, and then I want to get the raw link to the file that it just created. I'm going to go back to the tutorial here, and where's that link at? JSON Gen. I think it's also mentioned a little bit later on. Yeah, right here. So JSON Gen allows me to paste in a link to a web URL that has um, JSON in it, and then I give it a package name. I'm going to choose Acme and data types, and the object class name will be user for this. I click generate, and now I'm going to get a zip file that has inside of it the Java files that define that class. So again, let's take a look at the JSON. Um, there are members gender, verified, user image, and then there's a sub-object name that has first and last. So I'll go ahead and I already unzipped that user zip. It unzipped into com acme data types. And then I'll just go ahead and open this up in a simple text editor. And here we are. Um, as you can see, it created a class for name and a class for user. And I won't look at these too much more in this text editor because it doesn't have highlighting or anything. But I will go ahead and create a new project in Eclipse that's going to use this class. So, new Java project. And I'm going to name this JSON examples. I don't need to change anything else. Oops, did I just... I didn't mean to click that if I did. Yeah, I think... Oh, let me cancel that. Just so I go with the defaults. Okay, because I thought I clicked on it. OK, 
Okay, JSON examples, finish. And then what I want to do here is import into the source from my downloads folder on the file system. So I've got downloads selected there, great. And then from downloads, I just want everything inside of com. Acme data types. And I don't need the DS store file. That's something that Mac just generates as part of its file system bookkeeping. Okay. And shabam. Now I've got some, uh, they call them POJOs. All right. So the JSON gen has a few bugs in it right now. Um, just minor ones that you need to go in and, and edit if you want this to be a, a true Java bean. So right here, get verified is a boolean, and it should be named is verified. That's that's uh, the from what I understand, what makes something a Java bean is is that it uses a particular invention a convention for getters and setters, and booleans must use is. Um, also, the JSON gen doesn't detect that the user image is using base64 encoding for binary. So if I change user image from being a string to being a bytes array, um, we'll see... Oh, did I do that in the wrong one? Ah, there we go. I need to do that here too. Um, we'll see that the Jackson library can handle that just fine. Oh, bytes, user image. I guess I need to import bytes, maybe. Oh, byte. There we go. That's my problem. So, byte array. Great. Um, and then, let's say that I had something, like, name is pretty common. Um, so, if I did have another class that already had name, I can just cut this and then paste it as a private class inside of user. Um, and that will also work. For now, to go with this example, I'm not going to do that. I just want you to know that you can, because um, something like name is certainly an object that you might use in more than one place, and it may not be the exact same object. It may not be something of type first and last. It, you know, could be a product name where it has some other properties to it. Anyway, so now I've got those objects in there, and this is the JSON gen generated Java. Let me go back to the instructions. Um, so now I need to download these jars. Now these instructions are for how to do things from the command line, but I figured since I'm doing this with a you know, screencast, I might as well use Eclipse. So I've already downloaded these. Um, they're in my downloads folder. And then I have this user test.java, which is going to be the driver here. So I will go ahead and create a new class, there we go, which I'll name user test, and then I'm just going to paste in um, what I had before. Now you can see that it can't find the Jackson library, and the way I add that is really simple. Um, I'll just click anywhere in the project, I believe, and I can go to Build Path, and then Configure Build Path. And in this case, I'm going under Libraries here, under Build Path, I'm going to add external jars. These are in my Downloads folder. Uh, there's the core, the data binding, and the annotations. So I add those in, and now these errors should go away, and let me make some space on the screen here. 
so I can explain a little bit what's going on. Let me move that one out of the way. So uh, I've got my main function, and there's three different ways that you can use um, the Jackson parser. One is you can hand it a file. Another is you can hand it a URL. So this is the URL of um, that has that user.json we were looking at earlier. And another is that you can hand it uh, just a raw string. So I've got my user class here. And I'm creating a new object mapper, which is from Jackson. And then I try each of the three methods. I read it from the file. I read it from the URL. I read it from the string. And then I print something out each time so we can see that each of those works. So at this point, if I click the Run button, OK, yep, I want to run user test. See what I get? And file not found exception because I don't have the user.json file. So I'll go ahead and create that. User.json. And I'll go back to the example right here. Copy and paste that in. You can actually open it up in Xcode. All right, so now I've saved that file. It exists there. And when I click Run, we can see that it gets first, gets last, and gets gender. So Joe, six pack, male. We go back to the data. Open that up again. First was Joe, last was six pack, and gender is male. Now I want to demonstrate that it, um, the Jackson parser will go from base64 to binary when you've got the data typed as a byte array. So I'll just copy this and do user.get user image and then I need to have that converted to a string. Now this actually isn't real image data. Um, for the purposes of, purposes of this demonstration. Um, so we'll see what that base64 encoded data actually was. Foobar. That's what uh, this value here decodes to. So uh, this was a very exa a simple example, but you can do very complex types um, with JSON Gen and Jackson. And then I do want to just show finally that when you do have complex types where you might have name collisions, that it is okay to use uh, subclasses like this. So name, name, okay, I'm going to go back to their example real quick just to double check on some syntax. Okay, public static class is how it's typed. I'm no Java expert, so I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. All right, so if I run this again, and I've deleted the name.java, I save and run. Ta-da! Still works just as well. So that is how you use the super simple JSON object notation in Java.